I started uh, my career in marketing and uh, very soon I found out that it's very hard to market a really bad product. Uh, so then I tried to move closer to actually creating the product or having influence over, over what the product is. Um, but that was still in, in a corporate B2B environment. Um, and I felt like my impact on things was very limited in there. Uh, so a couple of years ago, I decided to move more into um, the now so-called startup scene. Uh, but basically young companies trying to um, build new products and bring them to market. Um, the first one I was involved with uh, was Codility. Uh, I took it to Seedcamp Week uh, with a founder we managed to win it, um, and the company received investment from Seedcamp. Uh, and then I worked with Atteli, uh, which is another Polish startup, a self-serve ad network, uh, where we were looking for models to uh, bring it uh, outside of Poland, because it was already a successful company in Poland. We were looking for models that will scale it across uh, Europe. Uh, at the end, I ended up back in the enterprise scene, <laughs> uh, working more and more with the uh, media group that invested in Atteli. I'm the head of international business development uh, for them now. Um, actually, in all of those, uh, but the, the, the one that I spent most time with uh, on their products and, and business models was uh, Atteli, uh, where we worked with uh, companies uh, in, in the UK, in Greece, in uh, Belgium, uh, France, uh, in Romania as well, uh, on, on, on figuring out what business model and what product we can scale across Europe. There are probably a number of things. Uh, so companies manage to um, screw up pr pretty much everywhere along the way. Uh, and Probably for every uh, technology company, it's, it's the most important part is to do things one by one. Uh, so rather than trying to figure out, um, you know, what the technology, what, what kind of technology or product should be built on, or uh, whether you know the website should be all in pink or all in green, is first start with uh, the customer's need uh, and the, the the space in the market that you're trying to uh, address. And probably uh, over the last six months what I figured is that the, the, the problems usually start way before the company is started uh, and the problem is someone tries to start a company in a space that they know nothing about. Um, Chris Dixon wrote a pretty good blog post about it uh, calling the, the whole issue uh, founder market fit uh, where uh, founders try to start companies in markets that they have no clue about and they don't do their, their homework. Uh, so, so if I had to uh, name one thing that is a primary reason for uh, products failing in the B2B space is because people don't understand the market that they are trying to operate uh, in. And it has multiple um, impacts on the business later on. For instance, they, they have no relationships uh, in the market. And relationships will be important because the, the next thing, once you decided to start a, a product in, or a company in a specific market, is that you need to talk to customers. Um, it's a lot easier to talk to them and they will be a lot more open with you uh, if you've met them before, if they know you, if, they, uh, if, if you have some trust built up with them over time. Um, and yeah, those would be the first two things. Once you've got that covered, uh, things are a lot easier along the way and you can learn uh, the other things that you will need uh, in the B2B customer development. Uh, those two things you should have before you start uh, the business. So the primary thing would be the, uh, the founder market fit again. Uh, and it's not because uh, Eastern Europeans, uh, whether it's in Poland, in Romania, or anywhere else, um, do it in any way wrong. Uh, they just very often don't have the experience in the markets that they operate in. Um, because uh, those markets don't exist uh, in, in their countries. Um, for instance, in Poland, you will have people that are quite experienced in e-commerce. Uh, you will have people that are quite experienced in um, any sort of enterprise IT, uh, but probably not in building products in those markets, but rather implementing um, someone else's products. Uh, now, if you are trying to start a product uh, in a market that has anything to do with fashion, um, the fashion market in, in, in Poland is very, very young. So we will, you will not have people that have experience 
or relationships in those markets. I've been to uh, Bucharest uh, already, uh, I think it was two years ago, um, and one of the things that really struck me was how um, vibrant and, and clustered the, um, the web entrepreneur scene was in Bucharest. Uh, I have not seen anything like that anywhere else in Europe, and I've been to quite a few countries. Uh, uh, sometimes it was uh, for uh, mentoring during Seedcamp events, sometimes it was just doing uh, customer development in those countries. Um, and, and this is something that is fairly unique. Um, it might be still small, uh, but people really talk to each other a lot, people learn from each other, and people help out each other a lot. And you can see that with the companies, uh, successful companies in London, such as uh, Uberview or Brainiant, is that they um, very much help anyone uh, from Romania that is trying to expand into the UK or US, wherever they have relationships. Um, and um, it would just felt right to be part of it, uh, because, um, you know, in a world where um, everyone has very little, any help uh, counts a lot. And, um, and I like to invest my time in, in places where uh, this can bring return and, and Bucharest seems to be a place like that.